Hey everyone, this is Emi Chicken from Team Pandori, and today we've got a package from the joins. I pulled off the sticker so it looks a bit messy and BANG! Wow. If you like red, please subscribe. It's a pretty color. Let's pull this off. Mmm. Seems like I've ordered another mini PC. It's actually really well packed. It's got this soft stuff. And it's so tight. <sighs> Even after banging it a few times, this product will be in tip-top shape. Histo! Histo! This is actually the same mini PC that the Super Console X PC is using. If you want the same PC fully loaded, check the links down below. Today's review will be for the bare bones system. Let's get cracking. It's a very attractive model, give you a quick spin. HDMI, display port, and then noticeably two LAN ports. On the top we've got a load of holes. On the bottom we've got scams perhaps, I don't know. What's this? Wow, it's a mouse mat. Oh, we're gonna use this. Here's the manual. If you wanna read, hit the pause button. It's in Chinese and English. A CDR with the drivers. Quick start guide, again in English and Chinese. Some pieces of paper that mean nothing. The bottom here we have two birdhouses. Maybe not. Might be able to make it into a birdhouse. Oh, we got it. We got a cable. And little feet for the PC. At the very bottom we have a VESA mount for the back of the monitor. We got a HDMI cable. And the power adapter. 19 volts, 4.74 amps. For today's size comparison, we will use... a post-it. This mini PC is around 4 post-it notes big. If you want to compare it to uh, Super Console X or the mini PC we had on earlier, it's it's like this. Squeeze. Sandwich. From the garden we have the specs. This is the E3 1505 M5 what the Hey, Emil Chicken! I've come from the future! This is not the real spec of this device! It's a V6! I repeat V6! And then I got a my future self came back in time to warn us that it was a V6. I asked the shop, and what gets sent out is whatever's in stock. So I got a V6. Sweet! Let's crack on. Like all mini PCs, you can just simply put it next to your monitor, or... In this case, we're gonna fit the mount. The PC also requires these doodars to be screwed in. Now she can just slide on. Give her some HDMI. Power. USB dongle for our Logitech keyboard. For a complete review, we need to use the mouse mat. Then on first boot, straight into Windows. It took maybe 5 to 10 seconds, and we're pretty much ready to go. I was quite surprised that the language settings were all done. As I'm in Japan, it was all set to Japanese. As the operating system is Windows 10 Pro, we can download a language pack and select the language of our choice. We can see that there are two partitions. Local Disk C has Windows on it, and with 73 gigabytes free space. Our D partition is completely empty, with 138GB free. The first website I go to, with any fresh install, Ninite.com. It's all free software, so just pick the apps you want, and get your Ninite. Using Malwarebytes, we found no malware on this system. When using Super Anti-Spyware, it's found a Chinese antivirus, which we can remove with the same software. Quickly to the benchmarks. With Geekbench, it reports that it is indeed a V6. Crystal disc mark. Shizuku. Just my type. Regular tasks such as internet shopping, no problems here. 
is quite a joy to use. Windows is actually very snappy, and I want some new socks. These look fantastic. Stick. Stick. Using this for office use, no problems at all. This is a joy to use. Even those extremely skilled at Excel, like myself, or for things like word processing, piece of cake. As we have a fairly capable processor, graphics tools like Krita or Photoshop are also on the table. Four K footage from YouTube. This is a PC, so Netflix is good to go. Now let's get into some next level gaming. King's Quest 2, Romancing the Throne. Pinball FX3. Your thoughts betray you, Father. I feel the good in you. The conflict. Horizon Chase. Turbo! Trackmania 2 Stadium. If any of you guys out there like racing games, this one is a blast. Rocket League. I had to tone it down a little to 720p. A little slow, but playable. Streets of Rage 4. The King of Fighters 13. Among us. The officer in the red uniform has no chance. Counter Strike Go! Did you hear that? With graphic settings at low, 1080p is looking at above 30. This mini PC struggles with games that require 3D acceleration. Skyrim Special Edition was at 15 FPS, so this is the standard version. This is at 1080p at low settings. If you require more FPS, just look at the floor. Here's some gameplay. As we have a fairly macho CPU, civilization should be no problem. Now onto some arcade games, Geometry Wars 3. Raiden 5. Max aware of it, but it's the first time to witness contamination of this level with these kinds of massive weapons. To be honest. 
Level's not complete without checking some emulation action. Dead or Alive 2, Sega Dreamcast. Tekken 6, PSP. All PSP games are running here at 1080p. Buffered graphics, high quality, at 16 times anti -Elicin. Outrun 2006, coast to coast. And God of Boar. Still runs a bit like trash, but with graphic settings down a click, you'll have a solid 60 FPS. Final Fantasy X, PlayStation 2. While this game runs at full speed, it's not the same across the board. We tried Outrun 2006 and it ran very badly. Moving on to some Nintendo now, this one's Cruising USA, N64. F-Zero GX, GameCube. This one's running at two times resolution. It's running at full speed, but if we add any more graphical options, it'll slow down. Donkey Kong Country Returns, Nintendo Wii. Two times resolution. Pokemon Dating Simulator, 3DS. Not 100% all the time, but it's playable. I wish I had this simulation in the folder. To get its top off, we need to use a hex wrench. The smallest one will do. Goody goody. And voila. Quite a compact unit with no wasted space. We have the regular CPU cooler. Directly under that, we have the Wi Fi module, which we can switch. And over here, we have space for another NVMe SSD. If we wish, we can insert another RAM module here DDR4. You're wondering where everything else is? Me too. Let's see what's under this fan. It's just four screws at the top. I wouldn't do this unless you know what you're doing. We'll need to unplug the fan too. If we clean up this thermal paste, we should be able to see more information about the CPU. Hmm, it's blank. Well, now you know. The heatsink fan is very odd. It's like a regular one with a slab of copper. Just gonna reapply some thermal compound. It's my favorite MX4. I usually put on a small amount and then spread it around like a paintbrush. Same on the CPU. Then pop it back together. Okay, so if we open the back side, we can see a few more components. The memory is uh, located on the right here, it's DDR4. And then on the top, we have the NVMe SSD. The pink tab at the top is for the SATA 2.5 inch drive, which you can actually screw in here. For example, we could use the Crucial drive. I installed Batasir on this in a previous video. Then into the BIOS, while turning on, just hit delete a few times. And there's actually not many options here to play with. But at least we can change the boot option. We'll change this for the Crucial. And then on loading up, we have Batasera. If we want to use Windows again, we just change it to the BIOS. But otherwise, we have Batasera with a lot of retro gaming goodness. If you were to get a loaded system like the Super Console X PC, this would be already installed and ready to go. Perfect for an arcade build. So let's go back to the garden for the pros and cons. Pros. It's a greatly powerful macho CPU. Stays cool, it's quiet. It's got good Wi-Fi, good Bluetooth, 
and you can connect things to it for days. The cons? 3D performance. Just don't expect this box to play all of the 3D heavy stuff, and you'll be dandy. So in conclusion, this is a very capable PC. Not quite enough to edit 4K videos on. It's a nice, cheap buffet. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe. Affiliate links are in the video description down below. This has been Emu Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!